Uh, the Pledge of Allegiance to the American Flag. You mentioned something about, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation indivisible under God with liberty and justice for all. Well, the last phrase just doesn't sort everything. I mean, with this segregation problem here and the uh, discrimination against colored people, how, how in the world could you have uh, uh, liberty and justice for all? What's good, y'all? It's the Demoshats React, and we're back with another video. Who we got today, C? Today, we're back with another American reaction. Super excited about this video, guys. If you're new to us, and we new to you, make sure you scroll down, hit, hit that, that subscribe button, button, and turn on the post notification bell because we're, we're on the road to 100k. And we cannot get there without you guys, all right? Join the family. Without, without further ado, do. let's get into the video. You sounded so good. Thanks. Let me say, me, 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 me. I ain't all the way there. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our forum discussion on the roots of prejudice. Let's get We'll it. be talking about what our prejudices are, where they came from, how they're nourished, and perhaps even how to get rid of them. Let me introduce you to the core student participants in today's discussion. So I noticed in the comic session, a lot of you were saying that, um, this is not today's age. Right, right. Meaning that we can't judge people of today based off something that was going on on a panel when it was right. just basically children right. doing the best they can to, you know, uh, put out their perspective on what they're going through. So this is not what we're dealing with today for yeah. anybody, who, just for the record, you know? Yeah, and, and so the teenagers been. today, uh, they, they, their mind frame is on a whole nother level. Oh, 100%. I feel like back then... And especially because this is a, this is a debate, mm -hmm. you know, so they're not supposed to be, uh, 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 you know, so I yeah, feel yeah. like they handled them, them handled themselves very respectfully. Facts, facts. So we're going to let that spin. Let's get it. <laughs> Ratnahi Iskandar Dinata, high school student, 17 years old, and also a talented dancer from Indonesia. From Japan, Yoriko Konishi, whose lovely voice you've just heard. From time to time, we'd like you to get a sense of what we do in all those times when we aren't having serious discussions. We very often get Yuriko to dance or sing for us. She does both. <laughs> From the United Kingdom, 18-year-old Judith Reeder. Judith's got a bit of a cold today. It did not come from swimming in the Atlantic Ocean, although she assures us that when she's in England, she does swim in the ocean during the winter. From the Philippines, Raul Contreras. Raul will be 16 years old, patriotically enough, on the 4th of July. Mm, uh, he so may admit some prejudices, but one he obviously doesn't have is a prejudice against women, or he wouldn't have been willing to appear tonight with three women being the only male on the program. Now, on this question of prejudice, perhaps we ought to start out by uh, trying to define what you think prejudices are. What do you think prejudice is, Ratnati? I think prejudice is a feeling of hate of people as a group or individual to it, uh, other people. You say a feeling of hate. Do you think prejudice is as strong as hate? Yes. Oh, yeah. uh, when there is somebody, if he has a prejudice, then the answer will be, I hate such and such. Well, I suppose that is true. What do you think prejudice is, Eureka? Well, I found that, that uh, if somebody distinguish between two white men, it is not prejudice. But if somebody distinguish between a white man and a colored man, it is prejudice. I would define prejudice as uh, a rigid opinion formed about a certain thing uh, before there has been a just examination of the facts. Mm. When a person loses yes, track yeah. of the uh, dignity of the human soul and begins to judge oh, others, not Whoa, on the basis... Whoa, wait a minute! He's 16, huh? It sound like 30! Yeah. God, I'll say, well, I'll tell you what I think prejudice means. God, like a grown man. I love how the the <clears throat> lady from, well, yeah, she's 18. Yeah, yeah, from, from United the UK, Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Like, she had an educated answer, yeah. her definition of it. I love that. That was very accurate. I like it, that one as yes. well. But my boy from the Philippines came through. Hey, and being the only gentleman, on, being the only gentleman on the panel, I like that. He came with the, you know what I'm saying, that confidence in his voice. So, yeah, let it 16. go. 16. Let's get it. ...opinion formed about a certain thing uh, before there has been a just examination of the facts. When a person loses track of the uh, dignity of the human soul and begins to judge others not on the basis of their being persons, but on the basis of race, creed, 
economic status, yes. that is prejudice. Come on! Well, is it fair to ask you whether you have any prejudices? Well, I guess so, Mrs. Waller. And uh, being brutally frank, I am, I'm, uh, well, prejudiced against Japanese. Well, not to the extent that, that uh, I hate them. No, not that way. But uh, I got this, well, as a result of World War II. Because, well, I guess I was yet too young to understand uh, what happened during those times. Mm. But uh, I think that what my relatives and friends and the people who were witness to that uh, unfaithful occasion, well, they just uh, more than justify the fact. And uh, I think uh, it's justified for me to feel the same way because, well, I know that my people suffered very much under that rule. You still as prejudiced against the Japanese as you were? Well, five years ago, that uh, prejudice of mine was, uh, well, slightly fading away. But when Japan sl uh, stubbornly refused to pay reparations to us, well, the prejudice began to brew again. Ooh. But now I found out from close contact with Yuriko and other Japanese that Japan isn't ready to pay reparations yet. Because as Yuriko said, uh, some of them, and most of them, even have to suffer the, the cold in the uh, classrooms because oh, wow. they can't afford to heat the schools. Oh, wow. So, yeah. um, Yuriko, you've got any prejudices? Well, I don't have any prejudice for Philippines, but <laughs> many Japanese people hate Korea because um, the president of Korea made the line, his own line, on the public sea between Korea and Japan. And uh, if the Japanese fishermen uh, go over the line, the, they were they are caught by Korean people, and they can't go go home for mm. a while. And we are trying to be a friend um, for Korea. Now that we've started, we better go on around the circle. Judith, you got any prejudices that oh, you admit? I, yes, I suppose I better admit, admit them. Although I'm English, <laughs> I have some very foolish prejudices. You'll probably laugh. For instance. Uh, as soon as I meet a person with red hair, I always put myself on my guard because uh, I have a silly prejudice that all red-headed people have terrible tempers, you know, that they're as passionate as the color of their hair. Oh, and then I have another silly prejudice. Uh, for example, when I first met the Australian delegate, Elizabeth Woodgate, who hasn't been on te television, um, I was shocked by her accent because to me it sounds just like a Cockney accent would in England. Oh, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> I hope I'm not conceited or anything, but uh, a, a Cockney accent in England, you know, most English people would shudder a little bit when they hear it. But she very frankly told me that she shuddered when she heard my accent. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got paid back for that, too. Why did she say she did? Oh, I think she imagined that... Uh, she said she really had to forget my accent in order to like me, because uh, it, it was too formal. I gather most mm. Americans think about <clears throat> that about... So Australians just always been just <laughs> just so silly and silly in a good way, right? Was, Humorous. She she's fine. Yes, yes. I, she's I love fine, this uh, panel. This, yeah. this, this panel seems less. They they seem more. I like that they're um, not so direct about color of your skin. Mm -hmm. They're more so about the expectation of a person. Yeah, they 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 made it about the topic. Yeah, they're talking strictly about the topic. Like yeah. they're talking about. Economics, um, recreation, reparation. Yeah, the, you know, the, they, war, the, the wars. About the wars. Things of that nature. So it's yeah. not necessarily. Uh, but she did also go down by you know appearance, the red headed people. Yeah, yeah. Which is, I mean, it makes sense how she explained it, but she's talking about exp uh, appearance. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So English as well. So. <laughs> right now, it's your turn. Well, sometimes I find the cutest against the Dutch people. When in, in school, when I learned the history and learned how the Dutch people treated Indonesian, and I have some other prejudices of my own, that uh, I hate people who were proud and uh, yes. I like who prejudice. feel that he is the master of the, the other people oh, yes. and who thinks that he knows everything than anybody else. Ooh. Let's come back to you a minute, mm. Ralph. Are there any prejudices in the Philippines? Right, I don't play with her now. She saw spoken, but she, yeah. she she talking right though. Yeah, who people people who think they have to be the master of other people. Mm. Yes, it's between groups of people. Yes, uh, there are existing uh, prejudices between groups of people. As a matter of fact, uh, most of us still well are prejudiced against uh, a group of hybrids, those who have more Spanish blood than Filipino blood in them, oh. and we term term them as uh, mestizos 
Well, it, uh, the, well, these uh, incidents uh, well usually occur in the schools. As you know, I'm in, in a school run by uh, Spanish monks, and uh, well, we have a lot of uh, we, we have a lot of those uh, of that group studying in our school, and usually they are they are favored. But uh, mm. we think, and uh, well, we think that we are right in saying that they are sort of aristocratic, conceited, and high high headed and sore-headed and all sorts of adjectives and they have the uh, the foolish idea that they have uh, the royal blood or royalty in them well how do you get along with these boys in school ralph no are any problems well, well frankly speaking i don't get along with them pretty well as a matter of fact well we usually fight with it with one another oh. man i can Is only imagine that like being in school and there's a group of people who just feel like they're better, mm. obviously. They're mm -hmm. better because of their, I mean, this is deep, but because of their bloodline. Yeah. So, that's... Yeah. But, I mean, you know, it seems like his, their prejudice on this panel has to deal with the wars, you know. Um, <clears throat> and because, you know, the, the relationship between Spain and the Philippines... Yeah, we understand I, I kind of understand why yeah. he would feel mm -hmm. that way. I do. Yeah. I do. And anytime we speak to a, a Filipino, they always, even today, they always still have that hurt in them mm -hmm. because of what their their parents and their grandparents went through. You know? So, I mean, and that goes the same with when people tell us to get over slavery or get over, you know, it's been so much time since the civil rights riots and things like that. Right, right when it affects our loved ones and when we're hearing the stories and we're understanding the history of our people, our lineage, it's kind of hard to get over things because these things didn't happen long ago. These things happen right. to people that we love. We still dealing with, you know, the descendants of the other sides and how they feel because they were told the same things that we're told just from an other point of view. Right. right? So let's think, let's, let's, I, I can't say the name, but put two and two together, you know what I'm talking about? Let's say the people on the other side, we're from Louisiana. There's a, a, um, a, a man in Louisiana who was one of the leaders of the other side, mm -hmm. right? And although we didn't go through lynchings, we, we have relatives along our lineage who went through um, exactly. Who went through these things? Yep, yep, yep. So it's like, yes, because we're in 2023, we have to, you know, we're integrated. We we were fortunate enough to have friends of different races. But at the end of the day, that is our history. But we have to be the new generation to to heal, but at the same time deal with what our people went through. Right, and it's not necessarily saying that I don't see color. Is is right. it's, it's just understanding like if you're not impacted by your history, then you didn't go deep enough into it to understand it. Exactly. And if you have no understanding exactly. of it, then you can you can do away with it and live your life coast to coast and do it as you please. Mm -hmm. Which reality, even if you did have understanding, you could still live that way, but mm -hmm. it would have a a more, you know, cultural way of living with right. yourself because you know your history. You right. know what I'm saying? Because let's say the inception of our country if the inception of our country wasn't the way that it was created, with the wiping out of everybody, bringing, migrating us, mm -hmm. we, our people was a part of a great migration, mm -hmm. right? Um, if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have these racial tensions. But because he, his people, went through that, mm -hmm. they have those racial tensions. Yeah, and they're and, fairly young too, bro. So you right. know it's still like, it's in, their, it's in their system of their mind, mm -hmm. so they know what's going on. Yeah, I just, it's like... In a way, it seems like it kind of won't go away. Yeah. In a way. In a way. It's just like, so if there's two people, one has been put through a lot and the other side is the ones who did the... The oppressing. The oppressing. The, it's, it's the oppressor side, necessarily, yeah. that has to clean it up. Has right. to have a, a clear understanding on why the other side is feeling the yep. way they feel, why people move, they live mm -hmm. the way they live, and why they distance themselves at sometimes, you know. So they have to clean themselves up in their image and their way of living and doing things around certain people so they can be, you know, fully accepted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can have conversations and be cordial and stuff, but just like my little man said in the Philippines, they don't get along in school. Mm -hmm. He said, We fight. Because yeah. they're not, their other side, it's like it's hard to accept. They feel like they're better, they're the royal blood. Right. Yeah, it's crazy. So being a minority <laughs> in a land who who accepted people marching down downtown, or even this one, when our people back in the day, not too long ago, mm -hmm. maybe right before we was born, 
even sometimes after that, they had to wait on a bell to tell them that they can go shopping in town because they weren't able to walk on the same sidewalks as other people. Yeah, they ain't know that part. Mm. That's new to them right there. Yes, Eureka. Yes, uh, Japan has had uh, many American or European soldiers after the war, and uh, most of them married mm -hmm. with uh, Japanese <laughs> girls. Yeah. Uh, not only race. formal yeah. wedding. And uh, they made children who called uh, hybrid. <clears throat> and uh, I think uh, the hybrid um, have nothing to be punished, but uh, some grown ups. Uh, yeah didn't treat, uh, didn't used to treat uh, as the Japanese children. Talk about and uh, grown-ups also used to treat the mothers of children. Uh, oh. Japanese people thought that uh, the mothers of high are not good, they are horrible, mm -hmm. because they married with foreign people, foreign boys. And uh, many Japanese people don't like to marry with uh, foreign people because uh, uh, they have, uh, they live in different um, customs and they consider with a different way. You mm. still have a strong, may I say, prejudice? That makes sense. It does, but I mean, <laughs> that's why in one of our conversations about mix, race i think we were talking about mixed race in ghana um if you are going to have children or be married to people of oh, another that was a, race that or was a sticky one, another nationality yeah. you have to also hold yourself accountable and learn their customs learn their culture especially if you have children so that the children are not in a situation where they have to pick one side over the other, you know, or they're <laughs> only raised with this side of the family and don't know nothing about that side. Like, right, that's right, irresponsible. Right, right, right. Uh, I want to say something, but I don't think I'm going to say it correctly. Um, it's like, with the interracial, it's like, let him listen to Lil Wayne. <laughs> not necessarily, but I'm just using the breath. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Let him listen to Lil Wayne. But also let them have these these gatherings where, you know, however they may do it in their family, you know yeah. what I'm saying, too, in their culture, and let them have those experiences as well. Yeah. But he's going to still get looked at as not the outcast, but as, you know what I'm saying? Different. Different. A hybrid, like amongst he was made in the, the science. Yeah, lab. amongst whatever family <laughs> he's, you know, tiptoeing or going back and forth to. But at the end of the day, as that individual grows up, you will have a great, unique understanding on life. Definitely. And not just one, one side, you know what I'm saying? Not just yeah. one side of the opinions. Yeah. yeah. In Japan, against marrying people from other countries, don't you? Well, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, she said it. Yeah. Um, can, could you tell us something about the status of women in Japan? We hear the strangest things, and you've been telling me the strangest things. Could you... Um, tell us more well, about it. Before the war? Yes, and now. Well, up to about 60 years ago, Japanese people thought that the white, uh, white people are horrible. No. Because they are almost red hairs, and uh, everything is so big in, about the bodies. Okay. And <laughs> oh, <laughs> quite a few people I <laughs> think so. <laughs> In Japan, we think oh that God, I don't even think about that. <laughs> words. Talk about big bodies. <laughs> and red hair. Like. So basically, what I'm thinking she's explaining, because I don't know what, where in the world she's talking about. Mm. I'm not sure, but she's mentioning that there was big people. Okay. I mean, like, heavy Yeah, because she did just say white people. She didn't say, like, Americans or Europeans. Right, and she said mainly red-headed. Yeah. Somewhere in Europe. Somewhere, okay. Yeah. Sound like Irish. Maybe. Maybe. If she mentioned freckles. But again, like I, I, I don't look. I didn't look into the demographics of the people nah, back in the day in never. Europe somewhere. I, I mean, I never. I mean, cause here, I mean, they they have all different types of hairs. I don't know. But that go back to what you were saying. Um, if, if they was to ask about us. Well, she said big <laughs> bodies, and and I know like you know she Japanese people bodies, are. Oh, they're petite. They're, they're they eat petite. healthy. They eat clean. A lot of rice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. My um. My first nail stylist, nail stylist, that's what you call it. Mm -hmm. 
I'm trying to think of the term. Nail, the, the lady who, Nail Tech. Nail Tech. Like, I really helped her with her business. Like, I, I was one of her first customers. Oh, I remember her. She was so sweet. Yeah. Oh, and, man. Yeah, she I love so her. Yeah. But she was tiny. And she would be looking at me like, girl, you gain weight. I'm like, girl, I just ate some raisin canes. That's it. <laughs> it was down the street. <laughs> it's going to go down. <laughs> okay, I'm a little bloated. But, uh, That's funny. That but yeah, they are, they, they are smaller. But I mean, when she look at us, I'm pretty sure she like, oh, they are just huge. In all the right places. <laughs> um, to be beautiful, must be small and delicate. You can hardly beautiful. apply the word delicate to some of the big soldiers we sent to Japan, could you? But I never knew that you looked down on us because we were big. That's a very interesting. We always could, we are always proud of us. If, if the Western men are tall and handsome, we consider oh, that yes. a... Yes. Yeah, we are proud we are <laughs> to be small and delicate. What you said about skin color, uh, Eureka, I'd heard that the uh, Chinese speak about us as pink people instead of white people. It's so much more difficult to be proud of being a pink person, isn't it? Oh, yes, you're a pink person. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well face it, Judith, here we are. I feel scarlet. <laughs> uh, Ratnati, let's oh, get... I yes? Said, uh, Judith, Judith, since um, Philippines has so many colonies and, um, well, let's say, all, nearly all, um, all over the world, how do you feel to the people in the, I mean, in the colonies? Do you mean have some prejudice? No, I, I personally don't have any prejudice, at least I hope I don't, but I know that um, a lot of Europeans think of the Asians, for example, as, uh, as rather lazy. <laughs> I don't mean to be Asians. rude, but uh, that used to be the impression we had. You know, when we started our colonization, um, we thought we were doing good to you. I know that you, you dislike, for example, in Indonesia, you dislike the Dutch there. But they probably thought they were helping you. They were not helping us. See, you, you mentioned that we are lazy. We, well, we are not a certain, um, exactly lazy, but, but they, didn't get, uh, they didn't give us a chance. See? And the, we didn't get um, experiments to, to build our country. Oh. Well, Judy, I don't think all Asians are lazy. No, please, you're <laughs> misunderstanding me. I said that was a general opinion. Maybe not now, I hope certainly well, not. A general opinion, but, well, when... It's not, it's, uh, well, sort of wrong to, to say that uh, they're lazy. Uh, let's, just, let's just say that they've got the very flat feet that they can't oh. lift them up. Because what? you've got to consider, for example, the climate in most of the regions in Asia. Well, it's just but natural. You, you, can't, uh, you can't just uh, work with all the hot, the warm climate around you. Oh of course, God. you'd always feel like fanning yourself <laughs> or going to an air-conditioned theater or something else that where it's cold. You know what I find funny? Interesting. Now, I don't know about blacks in other countries, but I find funny how here in America, they'll look at black people and call us lazy. But it's the black people that built this country. 100%. That makes no sense to me. Yeah. That makes no sense. While it was hot. While it was hot. We didn't have a Especially family. in the South, picking that cotton. And then they had Splitting a, uh, the peas. what do you say, the, uh, 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 air conditioning theater, where people just go down and sit down in the AC? Child, they didn't have that back in the day. Wow, interesting. This difference of climate that explains uh, a difference in tempo, but is there a difference in philosophy, too, that perhaps we in the West haven't appreciated, I wonder? Well, as far as I know it, and, uh, well, I think you've mentioned it in this program, that Indians think that they should never soil their hands. And uh, in the Philippines, I must admit that, well, <laughs> we're sort of inclined to get white-collar jobs and swivel chairs. Most of us do, especially the new college graduates. We don't want to work with our hands. We want to have, well, big bosses and uh, with pretty secretaries. Yeah, that's basically what he's saying that they don't work with their hands. They just, I mean, talking about like factoring and contracting and things like that, building and things of that nature, they're not trying to get involved. Well, well who, who gonna grow your food? Who's doing the farming? I know y'all was definitely farming, right? Yeah, I mean... 100%. Who, who, I, I would just love to know the answer. Yeah, that's some good stuff, though, man. It's interesting to hear it like this, though. Cause it is because the way that the, the UK um, girl, she was saying, um, you know, the colonizers thought that they were helping us. My, in, my, in my mind, let people do their own thing. You can't be helping somebody. Bef like, you can't... <clears throat> You can't judge a person first without meeting them and then expect that your judgment about them is correct 
still without meeting them. Mm-hmm. That's why she said we didn't get a chance yeah. to prove ourselves. It was just when they came, it's how they wanted it, when they wanted it. Just put us this to work. Third. Yeah, they basically. put us to work. They surround us. That's the common tendency. Could you give a proof that we are lazy? Oh, gosh, now you put me in a corner. I was trying to give you an example. Um, proof. You criticize the, the countries which do... You criticize the Dutch, for example. But um, I know the British, when they started doing their colonization, they tried to help the countries they were in. But uh, you think that we were butting in and taking away your opportunities? Well, yes, I think so. As a, I'll give an example about the Dutch that they, we, we didn't get a chance to be, to be educated, for example. That was when the Dutch were there? Yeah. Hmm. And um, do you think if you, if the people in the colony get a chance to get free, you will get them? Do you think? Oh, now we're going right off the subject. Yeah. <laughs> I was emotional, yeah, um, you know my, what I'm saying? Because she's so like soft-spoken, I'm going to give her 10 seconds back. But if she's so soft-spoken, she's like, like, she's asking, like, would y'all give us a chance? Right. Like, just the sympathy, like, the in need of, like, that's, that's an emotional question right there. Yeah, and I remember someone made a comment, uh, it was a stupid comment, but it was like, if we wouldn't, if my country wouldn't have colonized everybody, y'all would still be in Africa uneducated, un, un whatever. I forgot the whole comment. Mm. But okay, if that was the case, then let us be. No, I, I, Why make this whole world the same? If that's the case, let people be. Right. That's why there are still tribes in in different countries who are away from the mainland, yeah, yeah, yeah. away from you know the general population because they want to just be. They want their customs and all of that. They would never go in a grocery store. They slaughter it, eat it. Right. Like fresh meat. Right. Because <laughs> those people, they don't want to be like the other people. Yeah, and they know the Let stories. Me. They know the history of it. If the people in the colony get a chance to get free, you will get them. Do you think? Chance. Oh, now we're going right off the subject. Yeah. <laughs> See, um, my, my friend from Malaya is very glad that uh, Malaya will get the, the independence next mm-hmm. year. She's very proud and she tells everybody that we or she tells everybody that Malaya is going to be independent mm-hmm. uh, next year. Do you think that if you do that to, to the other uh, places, then you will um, yes, we will make them satisfied? Uh, well, we hope it will make them satisfied. Every country wants to be independent. That's only natural. But there comes a point somebody to decide whether they're ready to receive their independence. But I know we could go off on another long argument about that. <laughs> Maybe well, we can have what I'm sorry, Ralph. So, you have to earn your right to go to certain locations these days and do the things that you want to do in your mental space that you feel is, you know, good for you and your lifestyle, but you got to earn that first. I feel like that's basically what she's telling her. Like, she's like, she acknowledged her and and kicked her back down at the same time. I don't think she kicked her down. I just think it was... Telling somebody they got to earn an independence? After she didn't said, do you think if we had a chance to be free? It was their understanding at that time, thinking that it was okay. I... No, you're right. But if, from what I'm hearing, they're like, you know, you got to earn your independence back. But being colonized was a good thing for you. In their eyes. But you got to earn that back, though. Although they, they put the people in harsh conditions. Very harsh conditions and all that stuff is you gotta just get up and you gotta earn it back in whatever way, form, fashion that you see. Say, you know what I'm saying? This is this is somebody who 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 that was her country. Mm-hmm. You can hear the sincerity in her voice. I know she's the one that's very soft spoken. Not she's asking great questions, but she's like, can we get our independence? That's crazy. To ask them what do they think are the most common or basic causes of our prejudices. Is it uh, mainly skin color? Well, maybe. Do you mean the... Oh, do you mean, for example, taking the American well, people in the South? I guess taking the American side of it, it's just that the white people don't want to, to mix themselves up with the, with the colored ones. But what about the colored people? Perhaps they don't want to mix with the white people either. <laughs> well, what about, since you brought up the American race problem, uh, I'd like to ask you, uh, is it as bad as you thought it was going to be before you came, or is it better or worse? 
<laughs> Ooh, not her putting her two cents in to the, in the kids' conversation like that. She supposed to ask just the questions. <laughs> what? Okay. I'm Sierra. I'm on the panel now. I'm Whoa. Panel. Okay, <sighs> so um, blacks were, you know, forcibly brought here to this land. We were forced to work this land for so many years. That's what so I was, yeah. Many. That's what it was. They done tore our families apart. You know, they done whipped us. They done assaulted us in different ways than one. Um, you know, they have basically told us that we are not even human. Um, okay, so the war happened, right? Now we free. It's a long way home. And if the price is a thousand dollars, minimum price to get to Africa today, I can only imagine what it was back then. And again, these people have no money, right? Because, yeah, they have no money. So now we have to either stay back on the plantations to work for those people who just enslaved us, right? Um, some people even stayed on the plantations as far as the almost 1980s. Yeah. They were still on the plantations, living in those old slave quarters. Not to mention uh, they were sold for umbrellas. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm on the panel, too. Yeah. 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 yeah, and they were sold for umbrellas. The, well, in America, we were sold for sugar. We were sold for cattle. We were sold for a lot of things between the plantations as well. Okay, so so we free now. Uh, it's a long way home. Might as well make this home our land, right? I mean, our this land our home, right? Because it's been so many years, so many, so many years. years. So I don't think they cultured anymore. Right. I mean, it's it, again, it's a long way back home, and and then we. You know, being the newly free, mm -hmm. wasn't even the ones who was taken. It was our grandfathers and our parents, right? So the children's children's children don't even have no clue what Africa is. Right. Don't know what so, that is. So, so, so the man say we free. So let's make a home. It okay. Why I can't be a a, a huh, babe? No, go ahead. Why you can't be a what? Why I can't be an educator? Why I can't be you know work in the government office? Why I can't do all that? Nah, because if what they you, knew. If they knew their history, though, after being free, mm -hmm. because after being forced to not read and do everything else, they had nothing to mm -hmm. do with being a better person in mm -hmm. life. If they knew they was free, they would have packed their bags and went back as soon as possible. Right. As soon as possible. If they had possible. the money. As soon as possible. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't have been a question. Because right. whenever they was getting taken from Africa, it's like, yo, they come and fight for us to come get us, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, man, people don't know. They, there's no path on this water. Mm -hmm. They can't. They don't know how to maneuver it like that. So it's mm -hmm. like, yeah. Am I not a man, too? Am I not a woman, too? Am I not a human, too? Mm -hmm. I never had a problem with them. They had a problem with me first. Planet Rock didn't land on... We didn't land on Planet Rock. How you said that? Planet know. Rock landed on us. Right. So so what you mean? We don't want to, you know, integrate. The we belly wanna, of the bird. We want the same opportunities, too. <laughs> we want to get rid of those um, colored-only signs. We the ones fighting for the color only signs. This is in 1956. They was fighting during this time for the color only. They was fighting to get in the front of that the bus. We're going to go on and on. Oh, baby. okay. Yeah, let's, Sorry. Let's Sorry. just get back at it. Sorry. Well, I think uh, the historian it's, 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 uh, yeah, what I've know. seen here, the story is what very I've long. heard oh, while I am here, and uh, what I have read in the newspapers, it's just worse than I expected. Don't you agree, Judith? No, I don't agree. I'm bored. In England, we don't hear too much about the American problem, except, of course, when a certain case came up and uh, the Supreme Court decision, we heard a lot about it then, but um, not too much. And when I came here, um, I had imo imagined from that the Tiller case that uh, things would be really terrible in the South. And I found that there's a, a real feeling of optimism here. I stayed in a Negro family, and I was able to see the position, really a bird's eye view of it, you might say. And the first thing that impressed me was that the Negroes themselves um, were, were not happy about the situation, but were pleased. They were grateful for, for what progress had been made. Grateful. And they, they were sure that uh, the, the situation would continue to improve. Anyway. They said the two weeks you were in New Jersey that yes, you stayed right, in the Negro family. When I was in the Negro family. I know that was in the northern part and conditions are uh, better there. And uh, I was very impressed with that. They said it would be a slow pr process, but things were gradually improving. Yeah. It was a matter of breaking down tradition and... Um, but see, so, Judith... So, so, Judith, did they earn their independence back? <laughs> but, but you Lord, see, Judith... she spoke on the Emmett Till case. Yeah, she did. Ooh, she did, because it was, it was kind of fresh around that time. But, Judith, see, 
I appreciate that they put her with a Negro family. Judith is very intelligent. She really is. Um, and, and she sees the size of both point of views, but I feel like she still has that, you know, she that knows. mindset. She, she knows. knows. <laughs> but I feel like if they would have put her in the South, it seemed like no exchange students for this program was in the South. If they would have put her in the South, they would have saw the lynchings. They would have saw the people coming up to the house, storming in people's house as if it was their house, as if they were welcome there. She would have yeah. saw a different side. And again, the people in the North, they can't, uh, unless they have family members, and most of them did. You know, we all migrated to the North. Well, not all of us, but some people not migrated to the North for better opportunities, better life. Yeah, yeah. Um, she would have saw firsthand accounts of things that happened. Mm -hmm. You know, would well, have just been on newspapers and press yeah. conferences. I, I was very happy to find that. I'd like to know some of your other experiences you with. Yes, Eureka. Um, I've never seen any evidences of racial prejudice in the United States, but mm. uh, I've found out that uh, most Negroes are laborers. And they don't have a high position in That's on the prejudice business. right there, girl. But I, I was very glad when I I saw the Negro girl in South Orange, in Columbia High School, um, who was uh, the vice president of the nice. student oh. council. I'm glad you did too. Yes, right now. Uh, uh, here in, in New York and um, New Jersey, I don't see any um, racial uh, segregation or something like that. But when when we stop in Williamsburg and we stop in Negro school, I saw it's very strictly. I mean, uh, the Negro school go to the special Negro, and uh, I was talking to some of the girls in the school, and I asked them how they feel about uh, being segregated. But they said that uh, they don't mind about that, and what they want is equal equal rights. All right. And there are some places that. They can go such as restaurant or some club, and I think that uh, as uh, since all Americans claim and emphasize that America is uh, the most democratic country in the world, and as as far as long as um, segregation exists, I don't think it's a democratic. I mean, pure democratic. Well, uh, adding something to that, isn't it that uh, well, in uh, the pledge of allegiance to the American flag. You mentioned something about, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation indivisible under God with liberty and justice for all. Well, the last phrase just doesn't sort everything. I mean, with this segregation problem here and the uh, discrimination against colored people, how, how in the world could you have uh, uh, liberty and justice for all? And uh, I, in one of my hospitality periods, I... I didn't expect that even the kids could carry it that far. Mm -hmm. I had the, well, uh, privilege, I should say, of attending one of the uh, dances sponsored by, by one of the uh, civic groups. And I just noticed that, well, it was a big dance floor, and all the white kids were assembled on the left side, and the most, uh, well, shall we say, not strategic part of the ballroom, well, all the colored boys and girls were in there. And I never saw a white boy asking a white... Uh, a colored girl for a dance, nor did I see a colored boy asking a white girl for a dance. I had enough. And the oddness about that was because the white children was taught not to do that with the black kids, but the black kids was afraid to do it because of the discipline and the area that would come behind them dancing yeah. with a white lady. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So I mean, and we got to be honest, too. The, the blacks were taught the same thing. Look at Emmett Till. Well, yeah, and that was the reason why, just because of cases like that, and that's why yeah. they wasn't doing it, because of the, you know what I'm saying, yo, this can happen if even, you go, bro, don't even, like... Even talking. Even talking, looking. And although this was the North, it was better there, you know? Yeah. You know, they had free states in the North during slavery, so they had more of a, you know, free, free nature to them. Yeah. You know, they weren't as strict as in the South. Experience too. Um, when I first arrived here and I told, I happened to mention to a group of young people that I was going to stay with the Negro family, one of the boys got up and walked out of the room and I felt awful. I thought, well, we're in the North now, not in the South. And then when we did go into the South, I really came against it pretty hard. We went into this big store 
and um, I was in the, the ladies' cloakroom and I was washing my hands and I was with a group of the Eastern delegates, the rather darker-skinned ones like Ratnati. And uh, I was standing a little apart from them and this lady came up <coughs> to me and she pulled me to one side, obviously assuming that I was American, and she said, uh, she said, what are these Negroes doing in here? And I was so cross and I very, I told her as calmly as I could that I was with them and who we were. And of course her attitude immediately changed. But it gives you sort of a, a nasty shock when you come up up against it face to face. You read about it in the newspapers. You hear about it, but you don't really realize the significance of it until it, it hits you in the face yourself. I think yeah. the major co uh, cause of uh, the prejudice is skin color. And, uh, yeah, now we're back the, to that, yeah. The, I don't know why, but uh, I think uh, the white people think that uh, color people has, uh, have dirty skin and uh, they don't have a progressive culture, so uh, so got, the white people... Uh, but you got to think about when she last made her, her comment about not knowing fully about mm -hmm. the, the, how everything was happening in America. Right. So she's really on the outside. Look, yeah. Really yeah. on the outside looking in. So she gets a little information about her the experiences yeah. that's really happening. So mm -hmm. she don't know. Yeah. So you got to take her comments with yeah, a little grace. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. I'm not, look, I'm, I'm not going to say nobody. But I'm just saying, have you smelled us? Girl, we smell like cocoa butter with some vanilla beans. And, and girl, we smell like herbs, some good herbs. <laughs> Come on, man. Spice, cinnamon. I'm just saying, we it's, <laughs> some good stuff happening over here. Most great, 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 and uh, wonderful person in the world. Thank you, sir. On this matter of skin color, if you were here in the summer, you'd see lots of Americans on all the beaches trying to get brown. Yes, it's significant. I, I wonder what that really means. Yes, I think we white women oh. have an inferiority complex. The Eastern women and the, the Negro women have a sort of reputation for being so beautiful. I guess we're a little just, jealous of them. I guess you just envy us colored people. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> well, is there anything corresponding to that? In well, I think so, Mrs. Waller. Because in the Philippines, it's just funny. There's a common tendency among women. Well, those who have a, 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 a dark complexion, I should say, or just a tanned one, or just a brown complexion. Well, especially these uh, high society matrons. Well, even if they've got already wrinkles on their face, they still want to bleach their skin. Suppose you meet one right now and you say, oh, good morning, and uh, you see that she is just tanned and brown. But after three months, you meet the same person. And with the hot, with the useful society walk and uh, trying to be very dignified and uh, cultured and everything. And you just notice that her face was uh, lighter than before. And uh, when you look at, uh, at her hands and everything up to her arms, well, you, you'll be likable to say, to exclaim, Holy Moses, because there's a, a real, very great difference, you see. Oh, Lord. She's about very light here, but you look at, at the arms and everything and... Uh, the, the lower part of the body, but gee, it's, it's just a, a very great difference. He could be it's talking colored. about makeup. Uh, no, he said... It, there was his, bleaching. His family, I mean, his people, they, I guess, I mean, I think that's all over the world. Honestly, I don't know about here, but what I can say as a black, beautiful black woman. Come on, baby. Um, you know, there's two, like... In the winter time, I'm lighter. Like now, I'm lighter. Mm -hmm. But when it gets back to the summer, I'm gonna be a little bit darker. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm okay with everything. Yeah, yeah. Every, every part of me. And guys, that's our daughter. If you hear, you know, some grunting in the background. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but it's very light. They really bleach their skins. They do, Mrs. Waller. They. Well, what pay. about Japan? Does that Japanese women don't want to change well, it anyway? Do some they? Japanese women? Um, right? How does that? Die. 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 Their hair. Red. Really? Yes. Uh, they like a red hair, but I don't like it. What about Indonesia? Well, <clears throat> as the Western people try to get um, darker, darker skin, we try to get light, lighter skin, but we prefer uh, the sun. I mean, the... But you're such a nice color now. I don't know. Oh. I think it's When so we go out, then we use some um, long sleeve blouse to, to prevent from the sun, so we don't get a very dark color. Yeah. That's funny, and I feel like today it's not necessarily the skin tone that people are after. I think it's just the culture. Everyone yeah. is doing the same thing. 
dressing yeah, just about the same, basically. hairstyles are just about the same. Some languages and how they lingo talk, me purpose to, uh, saying not languages, mm -hmm. but um, the lingo and the style of speaking is kind of the same. You know, mm -hmm. everybody got the same kicks on these days. So yeah. I feel like. <laughs> Yeah, baby. In the black community, we have a colorism issue. I am not a part of that conversation at all. <laughs> again, I have told y'all time and time again. I'm I'm caramel, a little caramel brown girl. Uh, my mama is what? What's my mama? She's red. My mama's red. Okay, she she's red. My daddy's dark. 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 Um, I, skin complexion does not mean anything to me. I've never looked one bit. at another woman, another black woman, another white woman, and said, "Oh, she's more beautiful than me." I because of the never. tone, because of the tone of her skin. Yeah, I have never. I think that's a that's I, that's a personality that's a pers issue. That's a real personal thing a person has. Yeah. I've never even myself looked at someone and been like, "Yeah, but like." <laughs> it just sounds weird coming out of my mouth. Right. You know what I'm <laughs> of saying? Of course. But for a woman, of course, I, yeah. I see where you're coming from. Yeah, I've uh, never. Now, you got to live in your truth and be who you are. Look yeah. in the mirror and accept yourself yeah. 100%, even, bro. Even if I was black as I was shirt, I'd be like, oh, I am a beautiful black woman. Mm -hmm. I've never looked at nobody and said, oh, I want to be this. Oh, let me get a little lighter. Mm -hmm. I've never did that. Hey. Uh, tell me, what are your governments, if anything, doing about problems of prejudice? You've each mentioned some prejudice that exists in your country. Uh, what are your governments doing to try to eradicate it? You mentioned the prejudice against hybrids. You mentioned the prejudice against hybrids, too. Uh, you haven't told us much about the position of women. Otherwise, by the way, let me ask you right here. Are women any freer in Japan now than they were before the war? Well, before the war... Uh, there was no democratic, and uh, women belonged to men, and men controlled women in everything. Women had to open the door first, and the men passed first. <laughs> and in the buses <laughs> or theaters. I know you wasn't going to like that. Sir! What the? What? And that's my thing. They say that black people don't have no culture. Baby, the man is going to open the door for us. And we it's just them. like a woman not going about to. I mean, they. They can. They have very strong, independent women. That's a bar. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if you have a man around, he's going to be cultured. He's going to open the door for you. He's right. going to let you walk first. He's going to give you his umbrella if it's like red pouring down raining. Right. You know what I'm saying? Things of that nature. Like, But how she's exp expressing it, like, yeah, babe, you going to open that door for me? <laughs> you know what I'm coming through, like... We ain't even got yeah, like, ass. Nah, real talk. I feel like that's what it is. Just give them a feather. Yeah, and we always hear that. People will always say, well, what culture do black people have? Oh, we, we have, have a beautiful lot. culture, man. I we have a lot, yeah. okay? We, our culture is so rich that we have influenced the entire world. So it's, 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 it's interesting, as you would say. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to know that they would, like, and I feel like that's all the women in Japan. Mm. Was mainly going through this. I can't stop. I don't stop. know. I'm, I'm, I'm just speaking, right? Pitch. So, throw it in the comic section. Happy boy. But all the women had to be very Manly. obedient to <laughs> the, to the ways that the man wanted things to be done. You know what I'm saying? Like, and just the simple part, opening the door for him. Yeah, it's a different time, child. It flipped. It, it's a different I, time. I don't see that happening. How either. is I don't it see now? That at all. How is it now? Well, I think he asked that one. Too. Oh, okay. Men take seats first. Yes. Is it changing at all? Yes, quite changed. And uh, just now women can vote. And uh, women have Man. equal opportunity in everything. Uh, Judith, you were talking about your prejudice against Cockney accent a moment ago. Uh, is that still very strong in England, this prejudice of the so-called aristocracy against the Cockney? No, I don't think it's a very serious problem now, especially since the war. You know this idea that the English speak either with a Cockney accent or else with um, a very aristocratic accent. That isn't true anymore. Um, and we certainly don't despise people anymore if they speak with that. If you go into the House of Parliament now, you will often hear a North Country accent or a Welsh accent or even a Cockney accent. And we're proud of those kind of people because they are the people who, who got us through the last war and nobody would dare say anything against them. In fact, it's the arist aristocratic accent which is the other side of the fence and people laugh at that nowadays, I'm afraid. In fact, you may think that my accent is a little cultured, but I assure you, back in England, I have not quite a Cockney accent, but still an accent. <laughs> At least you mean to say your schoolmistress would not totally approve of you? Oh, no, I should be corrected. 
to Wait, it. I hate to think what's going to happen when you go back after three months here. So do I. <laughs> You'll write me about that, won't yes, you? I wanted to have time to ask you what you thought individuals could do in terms of eradicating prejudice. Mm. But our time's almost up. Anybody got a quick answer? Well, I guess we should uh, carefully uh, examine the indivi individual first before passing any right. judgment on him. Mm -hmm. And if we ever pass a judgment, we should be just with it. Yeah. That's a good note to end on. Thank you, Adati, <laughs> Noriko, Judith, and Raul. Next week, we're going to continue on this subject of... All right, man. That was a good way to end it as well. Um, it was. Yes, don't pass such a harsh judgment on a person without having... To, it, you know, if we can go with this. Don't judge a book by its cover. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Let's get into the pages of that person's life yeah. and see the things they went through, experience, and that's how you get to learn a person that way. But that's, that's the true. truth. But that's the truth, yeah. baby girl. Um, This was a nice uh, conversation. It was interesting to see, you know, their different points of views and perspectives mm -hmm. based on where they live. I saw, you know, one person, um, the girl from the UK, mm -hmm. you know, her mindset on colonism. Um, and the girl from Indonesia, Indonesia, the one who was under their rule, and just to see that, that, was, yeah, that, that was, dynamic was... A anytime good. they exchanged words, yeah. it was very emotional. From my experience, mm -hmm. from just listening to how she was yeah. speaking to her, like, she yeah. knew that she was... And I don't want to put it out there, but she spoke as if she was beneath her. Mm -hmm. Like, she was asking yeah. on a panel for uh, her freedom. Yeah, like she could do something. <laughs> Like she could do something. Hey, nothing she could do. She yeah. didn't live with the black folk. She didn't live up north. She didn't yeah. been. She experienced just about what everyone else kind of experienced. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So she was very eye opener to the the, the, uh, the questions was. and she everything. Was. So, um, it's it's interesting that they brought up the Emmett Till yeah. um, case. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and you know I love hearing the points of views of Raul. Raul. The, yeah, the the, uh, the young gentleman. Yeah, Raul. and how, you know, his thoughts were towards the Spanish, being that, you know, they were ruled um, by, I forgot the man name, but the man that got the, the man who they were ruled by. Yeah, um, that guy. And just to see um, the girl from Japan, how she was just careful to speak, slow to speak. Mm -hmm. um, she kept putting her head down. Couldn't quite I read think she, yeah. with why she kept doing that. I think was, what that was about was, because she had trouble, you know, pronouncing words. Okay, uh, so, so maybe she was a little bit embarrassed. Could or, have been a little bit embarrassed amongst the others. But she spoke great English. She did spoke, for everybody else who's listening, y'all agree as well, she did speak great English, but yeah. it was some time where she was like really questioning herself if she was about to say something correctly, right. from what I experienced. Right, so, so the topic of prejudice and you know, judging a person before you get a chance to meet them. I feel like people may judge us incorrectly a lot. Oh, 100%. You know, uh, they may say, oh, y'all just another ignorant, dumb, dumb um However they move, how they're breathing. Yeah. But, I mean, I feel like, you know, this is this is a, a, a home for us. Like, we feel like we're talking to our family. Mm. So, you know, our speech is relaxed and all that. Now, now we, have, we have told y'all time and time again, that intro, we're going to be professional quick. Yeah, that people but, see it. But everything after that, baby, we relax. We're going to speak in Oh, yeah, we're going to vibe with you. Yeah, so we're going to speak in a little slang here and there. Dive but, into the video, you're going to see that record spin different. Yes, but we're <laughs> we're also business people. We know the, we know, the, we know how to move. We you know have led conventions. We have led, you know, our, our events that we have. And we've been very, you know, we don't speak in AAVE. There's a time and place for everything. Facts, um, facts. But I feel like, yes, get to know a person. Um, before you place judgment on right. it. Right. And I feel like that we are transparent on our channel besides the intro because we give y'all exactly what we yeah. finna get into. And then we get into it in a way that can we all can have fun and laugh yeah. and learn and catch the importance of different topics. You know what I'm saying? But we come off yeah. as transparent. And being YouTubers... We are transparent. Yeah, being YouTubers, we have learned to do that. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel... I've mentioned this before. YouTube is therapeutic, bro. Because you're being a very open person. Now, if you're not, then you need to continue to involve and learn yourself. Mm -hmm. But as for us, we have been very open and, you know, real true and honest with things that came across. Right. Ooh, with she's things so ghetto. Mm -hmm. Making this video so ghetto. <laughs> We have been very honest and true with things that came across, you know, our platform and everything. But there's some things that we just probably won't be as opening about because it's life. Yeah. For us, it's living for us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but other than that, yeah, we're gonna always be a buck with y'all, man. Yeah. For real. Say bye. 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 <laughs>